boat casting started from your area, uh, the Thames Estuary. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, it didn't, it didn't. Boat casting as we know it today certainly was developed at, at Brabble, really, by Bob Cox and John Rawl. But the Dutch were boat casting a, a long while before they started, although with a very different method um, and do it in a, an entirely different fashion. Um, it's, it's been a very, very good method for us. It's produced a lot of fish, especially in shallow water. And you know, get the bait away from the boat, avoid the scare area. It's been, it's been a very good method for us. And it also presents the bait well, of it, course, yeah. That's right. On some days, I think it's the presentation matters as much as getting the bait away from the boat. Well, I know boat casting is different tackle than normal gear, and the rods are a bit longer. Can you give us a brief rundown of what it's, what it's involved with? Let's have a look at the rig I'm using today. Well, the basic idea of boat casting is you're presenting a bait away from the boat. Um, in shallow water areas, the scare area from the boat is quite large, and it tends to push fish away. Now, if you can find the distance that the fish have actually stopped moving away from the boat, you get an added concentration of fish. It also allows us to fish with much lighter tackle and much more sporting tackle than we would normally do in quite a strong tide. Now, because we need to cast away from the boat, we're looking at a rod that's much longer than normal conventional boat rods. Now this one, this is one of the new Daiwa Carbo Whiskers. Um, it's made for the job, it's probably one of the best of its type on the market. If we look at the action of the rod, we see down the bottom end, there's very, very little movement. This allows us to catch up nicely with a fish and sink the hook home into the fish. A little bit in the middle, which helps us with the casting. And then right to the tip section of the rod, there's a lot of movement. Now, as well as making it nice to play a fish, this also means that when we've cast out, anchored our line out in the water using our grip lead, Cast out, anchor the line in the water, allow a big bow of line to come out back to the rod tip. And then when the boat moves, the rod absorbs the movement of the boat so we don't pull the lead out to the bottom. Now, going down to the reel, we need a reel that holds quite a lot of line. We also need a reel with a good clutch and we need a reel with a fairly good rate of retrieve because we cast the, we cast the lead out let the bow of line out down the tide, sit the rod back down, and the first thing we will get is a pull on the tip of the rod, which will then probably slacken up as a fish has picked up the bait, moved down tide, pulled the lead out of the bottom. So we then need to catch up with the fish as quickly as possible before it throws the hook. Now these are Abu 7000 Cs. I've used this model ever since they come out for boat casting, I haven't seen anything better and as far as I'm concerned they're the one. One modification I've done with these, when the reels come they have a level line bar in the top there. I'm not a great lover of level lines so I have them cut out and a new stronger bar put in. Now my main line will be about 18 pounds today because Jan says we've got a chance of getting a tote so I'm going to set my stall out for a tote. Uh, they're a favourite fish of mine. 18 pound line is adequate, providing you've got lots of it. And this reel has probably got 300 yards on it, no problem at all. Moving further down, I have a length of 50 pound leader. Now, this has got more to do with landing the fish than actually playing it. If you get a tope wrap up in the line, the skin is very, very abrasive and it'll cut through 15 pound line like nothing. Also, when you've got the fish fairly close to the boat, that's a critical time. Once you've got the 50 pound leader on the reel, you then got a little bit of a chance and you can bully the fish a little bit more during that critical landing stage. Now, for all types of boat casting, I like to keep my end gear fairly simple. And that's what I should be doing today. said unhooking it. 50 pound leader, a Barclay Link swivel, the Barclay are acknowledged has probably been the best swivels, I've used Barclays for a long time, I've never had one let me down, no problem with them. On to just another Barclay swivel, some people will put a bead there, um, 
yeah, great if you like. Personally, I've never had any problem not using one, but I like to keep it as simple as possible. We then go on to another lump of 50 pound line, which gives us, again, a little bit of protection if the fish rolls up in the line. From there, another swivel, and a lump of 75 pound nylon covered wire trace. Tope have got a lot of teeth, some people will use heavy mono for them, and most of the time, using 150 pound mono, you'll get away with it. Uh, I don't like using wire in long lengths because it's nasty stuff and it tangles. In the short lengths like this, no problem at all. I've put a turn around it and a crimp, the same that end. I've used a special turn that actually holds the hook out nice and straight, so it doesn't turn back on itself. Hooks. Again, although we'll be fishing for, or I'll be fishing for tope, which are quite big fish, we'll hope to get one perhaps 35 or 40 pounds here. The hook doesn't need to be enormous. People often overgun them. This one, this is a Mustad 79515 and it's a 6.0. Another favourite pattern of mine. Um, before that they had, or they still have got, the predecessor which was a 79515. Similar pattern but with an offset eye, a marvellous crab hook. This one, superb. If later on I decide to have a go for smooth hounds, I will dispense with this trace, put a much lighter piece of mono on, 25 or 30 pounds, and then I will use a, a slightly smaller hook, a 3.0 or a 4.0, and for that I will probably favour something like the Cox and Rule Uptide Extra. And one last thing while we're on the subject of hooks, hooks come out of the packet fairly good, but I always like to give them a touch up before I start. My little trick, some people rub them across their thumbnail. Personally, I use that little bit of skin there. If that goes in nice and sharply, that's good enough for me. So let's look at the bait. Now, as I'm fishing for taupe, I'll be using eel sections, which are a favorite on my own neck of the woods on the East Coast, and we'll be using some mackerel. I've allowed these to defrost a bit, and these are actually provided by a company in Essex, Predator Bait, who got a large range of Electroblast frozen baits. Now, eel section is a lovely bait. Hooks on very easily, leaves the hook proud, and this is one of the great things I look for. In the old days with tote fishing, people used to bury a big hook in the boat, and they let the fish run off 30 or 40 yards, wait for it to stop, turn the bait, take the hook down it, and then let it run again before they struck. This resulted in a lot of fish hooked very deeply and a lot of dead fish. These days, we aim to return alive every single tow. So we want a rig which we can strike very, very quickly. And that is well clear of the bait, which means almost as soon as that fish starts moving away, you can not strike into it, pick up the rod, wait to feel the fish moving away, wind down into it, and then lean back into it. This method does mean you lose a fish or two because you, you're only hooking them well forward and once in a while you'll lose a fish. Um, it's a small price to pay for being able to put all the rest of them back alive. The other bait we'll try will be mackerel. These are fresh frozen mackerel. They've come out of the packet. Absolutely superb. And again, for this one, I favour a head and gut section. I'll be cutting it down there, taking the backbone out, so I've got two flaps on each side, with all the gut portion giving out its lovely scent trail through the water. To hook my head and gut section, I'll be doing the same thing. It'll be hooked very, very, very far forward, just like that, which means once again, as soon as the fish picks it up and runs away with it, we should be able to pick up the rod, feel the fish, let it take a yard or two of line, lean back into it and hopefully hook the fish well forward on its mouth where we're not going to do it any lasting damage. I'm aboard Jan Rigdon's new catamaran, Silver Swift. It's one of the fastest boats around here. The catamarans seem remarkably stable compared to ordinary craft. Tell us, Jan, how are you finding it? I'm very pleased with it, Mick, yes. I've had the boat for three months now and I've found that in conditions where most boats are extremely uncomfortable, my anglers are finding it quite comfortable to fish off. Um, 
we've modified the hole slightly by putting some bulbous boughs on to reduce the pitching. But overall, yes, I'm very, very pleased with it. Yeah. I know these are built down my neck of the woods at Canby, and I've been on them once or twice at Canby. Yeah. Very impressed. What are they like in the sea? I've found since we fitted bulbous boughs, they've made a lot of difference. Initially, I was a bit disappointed, but now I've modified it. We sat in a 4.6 last uh, Saturday and quite comfortably fished all day when other boats were leaving by 1 o'clock because their party were suffering from mal de mer. Yeah, yeah, certainly the weather hasn't been very settled. It looks like we're going to get away with it today. Um, at home, the toad have been a little bit thin on the ground and the smooth out have been a bit patchy. How have they been here? What's our chances? I found it fairly patchy all season. We did have a good run of toad about a week ago. Um, We've got every chance of finding the odd one today. The smooth hounds seem to have settled down a bit, although mostly smaller male fish rather than the big pregnant females that we normally get this time of year. Yes, uh, I see we've got, we've got plenty of room. I should imagine you fish a dozen on here quite comfortably. Yeah, I find I can fish 12 comfortably, although obviously a lot of the parties prefer to bring 8 to 10 and keep the tangles down. But there's certainly enough room to fish 12. So with just myself and Alan fishing, we should be alright. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll be alright for space. Tell us a bit about some of the extra goodies we've got here, Jan. Uh, basically, I've got two deck of navigators. Um, normally, because when I'm wrecking, I like to have a backup set. If you go a long way and you lose one, obviously you want to have another one, or your anglers aren't going to be too pleased. Um, you could lose a day's money. Yeah, that's right. Lose a set of customers as well. Yeah, even worse. Um, I've got them both set up reading the same at the moment, although the bottom set I normally use for monitoring are track down to where we're going from where we've left and that'll give us an ETA and a distance to travel. So what's that giving us at the moment? What's our ETA and how far have we got to go? We've got three, three and a half miles to go and our ETA's about 19 minutes. We're running against about two knots of tide at the moment. Yeah. Um, we've got away a bit late. There's a fair chop on the sea. But that's how we use those. Your normal colour sounder. Beautiful choice there. Really yeah, revolutionised things, the old colour sounders. I find on the bottom fishing, I use it mostly just for picking out the shape of the bottom. But on the wrecks particularly, with white fish with a swim bladder, obviously you can pick out every individual fish and fish to catch it. Yeah. What about radios? You got one or two? I've only got the one uh, standard VHF, uh, which has also got private channels fitted, plus cell phone which I use for contacting anglers during the day. So we're belt and braces again. Yeah. What do you think about this with a lot of the private boats now just fitting CBs because they're cheaper? It's okay from the anglers point of view to contact their friends but if they get into trouble the problem is that the majority of coast guards don't monitor CB and then if they happen to be in trouble on their own they're not going to be able to raise any assistance on a CB. That's my feelings exactly. I think the sea is too powerful thing to mess about with, and certainly yeah. your life is too valuable to risk for a few pounds more. And Absolutely, a yes. I mean, we were sitting fishing Saturday in a 46 south of the nab with a 15 foot dory anchored next to us. And the sort of people who take a boat out in that sea obviously have no knowledge of the sea or the dangers of it. And unfortunately, when they get in trouble, then you have to pull a lifeboat out, and other people then have to put their lives at risk to try and help them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, what's the bottom like we're going to be fishing over, yeah? We're going to be fishing on a, a heavy clay bank covered in pebbles, uh, which rises from 120 feet up to 70 feet and back down again the other side. The bank sticks out into the middle of a deep hole off the puller bank, which is quite well known for tug fishing. Now, I've fished there before, had some, had yeah. some good spot there. Yes, it's a good little spot. Where yeah, about on the bank? smooth outs as well. I like to fish right on the very top of it. But it, obviously if we don't catch after an hour or two, then we'll try a little deeper. You find they, they drop down the bank as the tide slackens? Um, yeah, they tend to go into the deeper water. Yeah, I find on the top of the bank they definitely feed better when the tide's running very hard. Which is, uh, which, when we get there, it should be yeah, steamy. In that situation, obviously the uptiding is, is the method to use. Oh yeah, I love the up one. How do you feel about the eels? Because when myself and the other lads from Essex come down here, we bring eels because we use eels at home, we're confident with eels. Sometimes eels seem to outfish the mackerel here, and yet other times, when they won't look at an eel, mackerel reigns supreme. Yeah, I must confess that I've personally never used eels. I've always fished with mackerel, 
there are days when the mackerel doesn't catch, the toad keep picking it up and dropping it, and I shall be interested to see today how you do get on with some eels, because I've never seen them fished. I've fished them in Essex myself on some of the well-known boats from Bradwell. I think it's about time now to get a bait into the water and see if we can get a fish. You ready, Alan? Yeah, but how safe is this boat casting? You know, it's um, different from casting on the shore. It certainly is. It's a bit more confined, but it's um, it's very similar to the pendulum casting on the shore. It can be dangerous, but if it's done properly, it's as safe as anything. Well, we've got plenty of room, so you go first, and I'll, go first. I'll keep out of the way. Think, remember, is keep all your tackle outside the boat. If it was a crowded boat, we could hang the bait up on the lead, and that would give us a bit more space. Being this is only two of us, we've got all the room in the world. Just out, and carefully across the side, up the side, no I problem. reckon I can handle that. Handle that. Keep the bait and everything outside. Yeah. Here we go. A fair, fair breeze. Right. Once it's hit the bottom, Alan, if you watch. Let a bit of line out. Breeze, let a bit of line out. And when this tide picks it up, it'll take it down in a nice boat. So it's just working its way now. What, what depth have we got here, about? I should imagine about 40 feet, something 40 feet. like that. Right. You need to let quite a lot of line out because there's an awful lot of tide. Yeah. Right, here I go. That he looked on the grab that came off just right. Perfect. Yep. Let me come underneath you. Alright, now for a boat tote. <laughs> be nice straight away, wouldn't it? Yeah. That's a fair bit of tide there picking up the line. Yep. You want a fair bit out because if these things pick it up fairly fast, that bow in the line gives you a little bit of leeway to get into the rod as well. Right, there we are. Do you leave it on the ratchet, for Rob? You can leave it on the ratchet. I mean, on the shore we don't, because uh, you get the rod screaming great run and pick it up and forget the ratchet's on. Yeah. It really depends whereabouts you're fishing. If you're fishing further down the tide, where you've got less of a bow line, then it's nice to leave it on the ratchet and give it a chance. As we're casting across the tide to start with, you'll find that the big bow line will pull it off on the ratchet, so I'm going to... Leave it on ratchet, but keep a steady eye on it because sometimes these things will pick it up and they'll be away. Yeah, I suppose it depends too on the on the type of ratchet you got on the reel. I yep. don't know. Yep. Shimano's not tight enough, so we'll, no. what we'll have to do is use it. What about using it on the drag? Do you, you can fish it on the drag. Yep. Got to be careful you don't over tighten it when you catch up with it because it's sort of line we move away from this rod. A bit special this rod, isn't it? This it one? is. Yeah, that's. Uh, actually, you're very honoured to be using that one. That's a Clive Allen Zenith. Um, as you probably know, Clive was drowned in the boating incident earlier on this year, which only goes to prove, no matter how careful you are, things can go wrong. And Clive made me that rod sort of shortly before he died, so that only comes out high days and holidays, so be a bit oh, careful of that one. Let's see if we can catch him a tote. Yep, go for it, one for Clive. Right, I'm going to put two rods out, being a bit greedy. When I put a bait on it. What bait are you going to put on that then? Macro on uh, that one? Yeah, can I do. Put this bit of a flapper oh, sort of on. Sort flapper. Yeah. Well, that's a good idea. You've got the, the tails left in it. Yep, just gives you a little bit of something to... Now I've hold it on. The hook's well clear of the bait, as you see. Get a pick up, you can strike straight away. Let's put that one out in the same direction. What happens if you hit two toe but one's Mick? We get some excitement. <laughs> well, that didn't go so far, so... No. What that one will do, that will come inside these rods. And underneath them. So I'll pass it yep. under. That's the way to avoid tangles on a yep. pier as well. That's it. It's, um... it's all to do with how far out you are. Yep. Sort of standard tactics. Now up tidying like this, the presentation of the bait, it's got to be hard on the bottom with this trace. Without, without with doubt. With the line of a big bow in it. Yep. Clamped to the bottom. And a tote like that. You, you hear people talking about catching tote on floats and tote coming well up in the water. And they do come up in the water after mackerel sometimes, but 99% of the time they're hard on the bottom. Mm. If you look at them, and hopefully we'll catch one and we'll be able to see later on, the mouth is very much underslung. They're a fish that feed hard on the bottom most of the time. Got it wrong there somewhere. That's no, right, mate. That's right. 
No, it'll clear, Alan. No, it's your other one, isn't it? No, it'll clear, mate. Back where he was and it'll clear all right. I can see that orange line, it's just right. Yep. Shows up well. Still under this. Yeah, it's where you can clear it over. Yeah. That'll clear. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to go over the top. Right. That's it. That's there. Alright, now we're fishing now. Now we're going for it. Right. Yet. No on. Thinking I'm going to change my rig over to a smooth for a smooth hand. It's the matchman in me. I need a, <laughs> I need a bite bad. <laughs> no pain at the all. for you. So I've, I've made up. I've got a, a 3 0 cox and roll on a short 25 pound trace. I'm just going to swap traces when I pull in and a nice juicy bit of peeler crab. Okay, mate. We've got some hermits as well if you fancy them. Yeah, they, they reckon him. But they, I think the old peeler's got the edge, you know. Yeah, I like peeler. They like hermit down here. It's easy to get in the pots, but. I'm afraid I'm a peeler man. I've got a horrible feeling about this. There's something not right here. It's not, it's not much of a pull, but there's something not right there. A little fish of some sort messing about with it. What you do is you wind and keep winding, keep winding, you get some weight, and we got, oh yeah, we've got something. But it's not a tote though, that's for certain. <laughs> Doggy, I expect. Yeah. It's coming down to the tide, it's getting a bit heavier in the tide. Spotty dog or something nasty, or a plastic bag. It almost wriggled then, it could be a plastic bag, could be a dog. I think it's a dog. Yeah. Something horrible anyway. Yeah, it's sure to be an LSD, yes. Yeah, yes, it's a spotty yes, dog. Yes. <laughs> That's just what I wanted. Really? Number you know one what, thing I think I these are my favourite fish on the beach. Yeah, they're all right when you're winning a few bob with them on yeah, a beach. They're nice, no fun when nice you're trying obliging, to catch a fish. Nice obliging species they are, bright sunshine. Look at the colouring on that. On that one. lovely black spots. Yeah. Magic. He's had the mackerel off, that's the trouble. Horrible thing. Now these things have got a very rough skin. At one time, people used to use them for sandpaper. They would also, when you get hold of them, curl themselves back up and scrape the skin off your hands. So there's a trick to unhooking these things. Take their tail, turn it back on their body, so you've got them, and that way they can't turn around, run their tails up their arms, or hurt you. This one's nicely hooked on a 6-0. It took, what was that, our whole mackerel head? That was the uh, was tail of mackerel. Tail. Come on now. We were getting doggies in, in, in Namibia like that, taking a whole head. Crazy, you wouldn't it? believe it, would you? Fish. Beautifully marked, some of these. This one's got some beautiful little black patches on it. So, it's what you'll buy in the shops as rock and chips, but uh, this little fella hasn't done us, us any harm, so we'll put him back. They're pretty tough, he'll swim away. Oh, yeah. Goodbye, little mate. Go on. And away he goes. Right. Well, I'm going to have this. Uh, this gear in now, I've got this rig made up, I'm going right. to put okay. a bit of crab on it. I'm going to put another bit of mackerel on them. I still want a proper fish. Oh, well, nice bit prepared. I like the backbone out of that though. Makes it a bit softer, yeah. doesn't it? I like to leave just a little bit of bone in so it all hangs on the hook, but uh, I like the actual bait. Be flapping and lovely. Yes. All that lovely blood. That'll Beautiful. Bring a tote around. I'm going to use a bit of crab. I've peeled it. And putting it on the hook. Should so be able to get hands without too much trouble here. So it doesn't come up on my cast. In and out the leg sockets. That's the secret of putting a peeler crab on a hook. Right, all I'm going to do is change my trace when I reel in. Oh, I've got it all ready there. The old matchman's double patting. Saves a bit of time if the tote and the smooth hands are running. Obviously Alan casting. Thank you. 
Not a breeze, push that line back, that is a cast. Those grip legs of yours stick in, Mick. They are beautiful, eh? Kit for the job, mate. Yeah, the old long tails. Yeah, <sighs> lovely. Yeah, sometimes for tow, but I like a, a lead that breaks out a little bit easier, so they don't feel too much resistance. The well is as much tight as this. You can't beat them big legs. No. Just let the fish run. I like the idea up. of bending the wire over. Just a little bit at the end yep. as well. That seems to make them stick. Yeah, that great looks... sprawly wires are all right, but they bend out. Yep. Oh no. I like another trick. When you've bent the ends over, if you want them holding a real tide, is hit the ends with a hammer and just flatten them off slightly, and they go in like little shovels, little spades. That's it. I'm going to check this other bait. Been down here a little while now. Green or not? I know Mick doesn't like a green or not. Uses a do you use a blood most of the time, half blood. Yeah, I use green as occasionally, but I've, I've, I don't know. I've never had the old touch half blood let me down, so I tend to hang on to it. No, this one's quite well. They are quite quick to tie. That's the way a lead should hold it. Only a spit. <laughs> I like the grinner because you can slide it up onto the swivel. It sits neatly. There's a little bit of rough ground or something here, Alan. Click the end off. You see lots of sea anglers with a great big end hanging off their hook. I always think that must put the fish off. I wouldn't like to be poked in the face by a spike when I'm eating strawberries and cream. And that's what peeler crab is. Sea angling strawberries and cream. Right. The bait on the grip Yes. You alright then? I'm gonna yes, mate, you are. Have a shot. That was certainly holding him well. One hundred and fifty. <laughs> I could get into this boat fishing, you know, Mick. Yeah. So could I if I hadn't picked up my other line? Plenty of line out, he said. Right, smooth hound. It's your turn now. A double figure smooth hound. They go well. They go well on the shore that, anyway. That was hanging in very well, Alan. It hung in too well. All I was saying about them nice grip leads, they do grip. Yeah. Not at the lead or not. Right, there we are. What a lovely sound. I want to fish on the end of it in a minute. You ain't doing that, don't you? Now frighten everybody. Wake them all up. Right, put the ring there. I'll stop the rod getting pulled over. Right, oh wait, I'm going to make up another trace and bake that up ready for the next cast. Right, we're in business. Uh, I just stopped for a sandwich and uh, fairly typically the fish picked it up and screamed away as, uh, as I tried to have a bite, bite to eat. It ran down tide and it's now running up tide. It's not a monstrous fish, but it's a fair creature. I would well, say by the feel of it, we're looking at 30, 35 pounds of fish. It's going to be a, a few minutes yet before we find out. It's running up tied towards the anchor rope, which I don't like. Now it's come back down a little bit. Well done, Mick. You're in at last. Yeah. The other rod's out the way, so you've got plenty of room now. Lovely. You, can you take the other rod completely out for us, please, Yeah, Alan? I've got it out of the way completely. God, dear. Coming down tied at a real rate of knots. You've got to try and keep up with these things. Catch one of these yourself. I would, yeah. I shall have to go back to tote fishing in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Certainly works. Yeah, I think possibly, as they say, when the fish are open, that 
Yeah. That's going well, Mick. Yeah. There's a lot of weed around the line, so I'm... I'm going to see if it'll work. Yeah, I've not seen one of these years myself. No. Interesting. Yeah. Personally, we always try and sail the fish by hand, but on this boat, we're too high above the water, yeah. so we thought we'd try something different. But I think it needs some sort of catch here just to support it. Oh, it's coming towards me again. You put it onto the fish. That's right, it's yeah. a little piece of nylon or something. Yeah, it certainly it goes down. It goes down narrow enough, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Right, yeah, and you're the boy for this. There we are. God, it's come screaming down tide then. Caught up with it again. It's not a pouting mick, is it? No, it's not a monster. It's going well, going well. But it's a fair fish. Ah, uh, you've got him against the tide now. He's he's coming up. Yeah, you've got a problem at this stage. You can tighten up to clamp down on the fish to give it a little bit more and if they scream away again you get smashed very 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 easily now I've got a lump of 50 pound leader on here once I get the leader then we're in charge it's now just hanging in the tide they tend to stick their noses down into the tide, flare their petrels out and you've got a hell of a job to bring them up against the tide. Can you move that bag of uh, herbs for us, please? Are all the other rods out, Alan? Yeah, you're okay. This one, sir. Can you shift your one, please? He's coming around your side of the boat, mate. Normally, we wouldn't worry about taking all the rods out, Alan, but uh, but as it's the first one, we'll get this one in the boat before we uh, take any chances. Take it on this side. You sure that tailor's all right? Yeah, that's a weird looking tailor, mate. We'll give it a try. Ah, now if you look, see my lead has come up above the leader knob. That's quite dangerous. Just. Uh, just unclip the lid off it please, yeah? Don't drop the lid down because that's sometimes frightens the fish. Just unclip the lid. Right, thank you, Anne. Yeah, that can cause problems. Yeah, if the lid the drops down on the top of the fish, it sometimes worries them and they'll go screaming away again. I think with the way he's coming, we may have to try and bring him onto the other side of the boat. Um, we can do, mate, we probably... You might be so right. Yeah, we're clear on this side. I've got the leader now, so providing the hooks in well. Um, oh, he's a fair creature. Got oh, a, monster, a nice one. Uh, he's an average. A lovely yeah, tote, mate. He's going to make 30, is he? Let's bring him up. Yeah, so he's well hooked at the bottom jaw. He's going nowhere ah. yet. Not too nice to bring him up, though. Way, we're in a smoothie, boy. Well, it's all action now. Careful, Mick. I don't want to let this leader go. I've got the lamp of fifty pound leader. Uh, I've got all of ah, the that tailor of yours yet. I'm feeling. Uh, I think I just got bitten off by a tote, Mick. Huh? I'm feeling. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be patenting that tailor if that was me. It just needs a little bit of work. A little bit of work on it, yeah. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on, he's gone down again. Putting a lot of pressure on it now, but the hook holds fairly good. And in actual fact, it came off now. We've had our fun out of him. Yeah. You can have a hell of a job with that, mate. Well, there she is. Uh, he is rather on the top. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't think that you're going to get it to tighten up around his tail. Can you not lean over and get hold of the fin? Have a try. Depends how good the hook might be. No, I mean if someone takes someone takes your legs. 
I'll, I'll pull him on the rod, yeah? I'll tell you what we do. Let's do it like we do it at home. Alan, can you come and hold the rod? Right, if you hold the rod, yeah? If you hang on to my feet, lower me down, I'll get a hand on a fin and then you can pull me down. You can lower me down as far as you like, but you've got to hang on to my feet, okay? Yes? Right down the bottom of me. Right, lower, lower me down more. I've got to come down more, Yan. What are you going to do if Jaws comes along? Right. Yep. I need another two or three inches, Yan. Okay. Right. Right, now I have the fish. Okay. Now. Can somebody pull me back in? Someone can hold the back of me. I'll pull him in. <laughs> Not the most professional way to land him again. <laughs> As you Magic. know yourself, I normally, with these kind of fish, using a fine wire hook, yep. and generally just pull the hook out of the fish and let them swim away unharmed. Right. Well done, Mick. Nice one. That's a wire before we put it back? Um, yeah, I suppose we ought to. Let's just, uh, let's just show the people the, the actual teeth of these creatures. And you see what I was saying about the, the mouth being very much underslung when I was talking to Alan earlier? The fact that these are bottom feeders. People that tell you they're up in the top of the water all the time. If you want to catch them, in the bottom. But it's not a monster. Um, I've got a waist thing in the cabin. I'll go and get that. Yeah, I'll go and get it for you. If you wouldn't mind, please, Alan. And there's a set of scales in there as well. Got yeah, I've got the sling. Fine job. Get some water in it. Yeah, can you go splash the water, please? At one time, we used to weigh these by hanging them up by their tails on a bit of rope. And we thought we were sort of being very good and conservation conscious. Nice Having shot. spoken to a number of experts on sharks, I found out that's perhaps not the best way of doing it. They've got no bones, they're all cartilage, and they're... Stomach muscles can be stressed if you hang them up by their tail. So we've had these made. Uh, Kevin Nash, the uh, carp specialist, has made them for us. They're a bit like his uh, carp slings, but they're an awful lot bigger because the fish we put in them are normally bigger. Let's, what are we looking at? Close on 30, I'd say. Come on, little mate. Oh yeah, oh look at that. Well I haven't got the weight of it. Mm. Better than we thought, 36, 36, 37, probably less the weight of the sling. So we're talking about 35 pound fish I'd say. Nice little fish for a start. Should we get this one back in the water and see if we can get another one? Should we get well one done, for you, mate. Alan? Well done. Should you take that silly bit of crab off and put a oh, nice I just, lump of eel I just lost a smooth end while you were landing that. Go Come back pulled out. Uh, put it back. Oh. Right, that's great. One down to the eel. Let's put another lump of eel on and see if we can get another one still. Three, yes. Come on, Alan. Oh, yes. Oh, well done. Was that on crab? On a bit of crab. Oh, playing for boys' fish with a hound? Yeah. Yeah, that one? yeah, it's a smoothie. I don't think it's a very big one. Not as big as the one I lost. It comes straight out of the bottom. It's came in double quick time. Yeah, it's only about four pound. Move five. Anyway. Yeah, lovely fish. Lovely. They're beautiful fish. Here he comes. Lovely job. Well done, yeah. Well, I'm not a blanker. That's that peeler crab again. Just, just took nicely. I was a bit quick on it actually. After I, I missed, dropped the other one. I was a bit quick on that one too. Lovely fish. As you can see, unlike the tote we've looked at, these have no teeth. Toothless. They've just got a little crushing flat plate, much like any other kind of skate. So you don't need to use any kind of wire trace for them. And that's a starry, is it? It's very difficult to tell, to be quite honest. Yeah. It's got the star marks. It's got a few across. faint stars, but you get them with yeah. much more pronounced stars than that. You oh well. Find, you usually find if you hold them by the nose, they don't fairly quiet. Mm. Oh, I'll put him back. Well done.
or put her back, we should say. I'm going to grow a bit bigger, and I'm going to get a bigger one now. I think I'll put a bigger bit of crab on this time. Right, well, if a uh, few lads have finished, I'll cast out again. Let's hit the water and I'm still letting line run off. In a moment the, the lead will hit the bottom. But you still don't stop. Uh, the lead's hit the bottom. Now, let the line carrying off and the tide will pull it down tight, give it a nice bow in the line. And that helps hold the grip lead in the bottom. I'm letting out a bit more line than I would normally because there's quite a lot of tide. With these tope, I want a little bit of time to catch up. I don't want them hitting straight away and feeling the weight of the rod immediately. Right, that's baited up. I've got two lovely big crabs on there. I've taken the lungs out of them like we do for eels. I don't know if it makes any difference for the smooth hounds, but we'll try that. It's a lovely bait. I'll cast that out. Probably wouldn't make a lot of difference for these if you left the shells on the lot, Alan. But no, it looks it's... nicer like that, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, bigger, bigger smooth hound this time. Right up the tide. Yeah. I've got the hang of this now. It's just like fishing on the pier, really. Yeah. As long as you don't tangle the lines up by casting over the top of somebody and then drifting underneath them. Plenty of line out. I want one of those smooth hand bites that picks it up and runs a ratchet off. <laughs> That's what I want. On the shore, they, they certainly rip line off. Oh, they're lovely fish. They're probably the gamest of the fish we've got. People reckon bass fight harder than anything. First, I don't believe that at all. No, no, they've got a rate as one of the best. Pound for pound. Unless we could get six or seven pound mackerel, that might take some beating. Come on, fishies, let's have another one. I reckon them smooth out the feeding down there now. Yeah. Oh yeah, without doubt. They're running the through. Fight. They're running through. Yeah. They're starting to slack, and it's a good time for for hounds now. Um, for a little bit longer, I'm going to stick out and see if I can get another tote. I like that. They're, yeah, they're proper I, I, creatures. You've got me tempted now to go back <laughs> on a bit of eel. Yeah. Now I've caught me little smooth hound. It's only a tiddler. I'd like to get a tote. Yeah. I think we've got to run. Oh. Go on! That was quick. That was lovely, wasn't it? They like that old eel. If we can catch up with him. Oh, he's come back to the water, eh? Trouble having so much line out. It's come back to walls from too far. It's towards you. And yes. Whee! Yep. Let's move these rods for you. Thanks, Alan. Yep, we're in business again. How's that old tailor of yours, Jan? Are we, uh, we confident with it? I like that old eel. Oh, he's coming this side. He's a dour one, he's this one. All right. Have you got another one, Mick? I've got another one. Oh, we're going to try a modification on this. Yeah? We've never tried one before. We're going to try and make it work this time. Probably better than hanging me over the side. Better hanging you over the side head first, isn't it? It's quite my better instincts. That's no problem. We do that at home because we haven't got these high DTI rails on most of ours. And it's a nice, safe way of landing them. Uh, it's a dow fish, this one. Doing nothing. Just doing absolutely nothing. So one one again. He might be in this line on this other rod, Mick. Oh, that's handy. Yeah, oh, look, he's woke up. I'll hold mine out of the way. Well, I don't 
own way. As I say, you know, we're only putting them back anyway, so if it comes off, it's not the end of the world, is it? Yeah, as I said before, very often a lot of the uh, experienced type fishermen don't bother with grinding them now. Comes a leader knot, jammed up with weed. I said earlier, we have to be fish out of the water. Some people feel that you can damage them. Can you do me the honours on that bit of weed on the end there? Who down this one? But I'll it's going to spring away in a minute. I'm just going to go in a minute. It's just... She blows. It ain't very big, is it? Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. I think we'd probably just lift that in on the, on the trace and the 50. Yeah, I wouldn't bother with that. Yeah, just lift it in, mate. If it comes off, it comes off. It's not the end of the world. Thanks, Shan. Another one to the lump of eel. Yeah, it's amazing because at one time we used the eels because we we never got a small fish on the eel. If we got a tobe on eel, it was only a it was always a thirty pound plus fish. Um, that one, what does that one go about? Twelve? Yeah, it's been twelve or fifteen pounds. On this one. That's, that's the smallest tobe I've caught this year. <laughs> never mind. That's a female. A female horse. So there you go. Come back when you weigh about 75 or 80 pounds, <laughs> love. Can you sling it back for us, please, okay, yeah? Yeah. Cheers. Not like a rocket. Great stuff, off. Two about, to two, tote uh, nil. Yeah, what about the old uh, mackerel then, yeah? Well, you're fishing all your rods for deal. Oh, Why are you going to catch it? <laughs> oh, well. That's a fact of life, mate. Where's them packing fish? That's it. Where's my nice little frozen boxes? A bit of goodies. Nothing wrong with that. I shall have to try one of those in a minute, Mick. Get the wire trace back on again. Yeah, then. I should, mate. There's, there's one or two about, you know, this is about probably just coming out of the best of the time. Called Big Lump, that one. But it's a big lump. Never mind. Give him a whack out. A bit closer to the boat, this one, I think. Right. That was a hot one, that one, wasn't it? Nice, oh, yeah. dear, oh, dear. Never mind, mate, it was a tow, and it was on meal. I'm getting pestered with pouting on this crab now. Yeah. Tide's slacking off a bit, giving him a chance, isn't it? Yeah, I think I'll have it in and... Uh... Try a bit of eel. Come proper fishing. You've got wetted me appetite. <laughs> oh, go on, mate. Oh, look at this. Oh, go on. Yeah, it's not a monster again, but it's better than the last one. Oh, look at this. It's going up tied well. Lovely lively creature. Don't like shaking his head, you know? Shaking his head like a fish that's going to come off you, so and so. Go on. Shaking his head like a fish that was well hooked, well forward, you know? Don't like it when they do that. Yeah. Yep, look at that. Yeah. Dear, oh dear. That's the name of the game. That's the name of the game, unfortunately. No, I do the Sam. The way it was quite often with fish, when they're shaking their head like that, you know they're hooked well forward. And I was just saying, yeah, I don't like the way this is shaking his head. Go on. That's the name of the game. In actual fact, in actual fact, this lump of eel looks okay. I'm going to stick it back on and chuck him back out again. Hmm. Turn around and go get my boat now. Little so and so. Yeah, yeah proper smooth around this time. Well, it's like the last one, the one I lost when he had the tote. That, that was going like this, and then come off. I'm 
got a line near me? Yes, sir. I'm in it, go. Yeah, I changed over just now when no one was looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this mind you, it could always be a small tote picked up the crab. <laughs> really? You don't want to come up. Yeah, it's sunny out different times of season as well. Whee, it's going well. Oh, he's keeping well down. Here he comes. There's your leader. Once that on the reel, I can bully him a bit. Not as I haven't done that already. Yes. He's a lively one. Oh, they're a lovely fish. I tell you what we got here. No, I thought it was for a minute. It was tagged. Coming up with government health warnings next. Complete with a cigar wrapper. It's well in there, lovely job. I thought it was a bit bigger than that. They just do fight well, don't they? They do fight. Yeah. Oh, nice fish, nice fish. Can you turn her to the sea? Yeah, put her back, let her swim away. I'll have to change that hook length too, that's well chewed up. Not the teeth, it's rubbed on the, on the skin. I'll have to change that before I bait up again. I think I'll go back to tote fishing now, I've caught a smooth end. I'm going to have one of a mixed tote, I think. Good one, Mick. No. Hard, man. Yeah, it started. Certainly a good one. Lovely run, eh? You know what that was? Yeah, let's say it's not a good one. No, it's a rock bit of mackerel on the end. Is it a hard old mackerel? No, good, eh? Yeah. What a shame, eh? Yeah. Could be just one fish coming along, then. Yeah. Can't fish. He's going under the boat, though, Austin. Can we move them? Uh, oh, this place. Cool, he's going right under the boat. I wonder. Is it? What worries me is whereabouts the anchor line is. Another one that's shaking his head though. I also let well I let it run quite a long time though. Don't shake your head though, I hate when they shake their heads like that. I hate when they shake their heads like that. Fish know when they're hooking all forward, don't they? It was coming back towards me very, very quickly to start with. 
no, I picked the lid up. Yeah, that's what I, th I thought it was a small lump. It's, it's, it's fairly close now. Oh! You're not going to risk your new tailor? Right, have a tight stack of water. Look! I'm not convinced, right? It's going to need another month's development work. So we'll have to wait until next year before it gets a serious trade. There it is, anyway. That's a nice fish, only just hooked. <laughs> <laughs> They are very finicky today, aren't they? Yeah. Very, very finicky. So we've got one on a piece of mackerel. Yeah, we've got one on a bit of mackerel. I'm not convinced about this tail, mate, at all. Same as before, mate. The fish is going nowhere. The salmon. All right. All right, Nick. Yep. Yeah, pull me up. One way to do it. Well, that's, I feel like that's I thought not the most professional way to bring them in, but uh, it's a fair male again. Nice one. Oh. Don't, don't let him thrash about him, it hurt himself. See how lightly that fish is hooked. If you put a little towel over the head of these fish, they'll lie very quietly on the deck whilst you unhook them. Nice. Very, very lightly hooked to them. Buy this one again? Um, I suppose we ought to. My Betsy beats the other one. Do you reckon? No, yep. I think he's a bit smaller, Alan. Nice little fish again, Yeah, nice one. Nice one. Hang in there, little mate. What have we got, lads? You're holding up, Yeah, close on. Yeah, close on. Give you a fully, Roy. Less a bit for the scale. A bit less for the bag, yeah. 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 Get him back in the water while he's still nice and lively. That's a nice fish. Lovely whale. Well, he's heavy when you feel it. Yeah, you can see it. Well, he's quite a big fish. What a cracker. That's a lovely way to finish the day. We've had a, a couple of three nice tope. Alan's had a couple of hounds. We've had a, a little bit of hassle with the dogfish. The tope, as you've seen, have been very, very, very finicky. Um, they've been picking up baits. The one I lost must have been just hooked. This one was only just hooked. But uh, as you can see, they are an absolutely superb fish. And like all the tope we catch, we'll put this one back and wish him all the best. <laughs>